so powerful about that was it used other art forms, spoken word, music, lighting, and then the contributions from the actual interviews and young people right at the heart of it. So very, I mean, it's wonderful that you showed a clip of Harry Olmo, one of the survivors. I was lucky enough on Wednesday to be sitting next to Harry um, and he is in his 90s and he was there to witness uh, the performance that um, uh, that we were there to see in Birmingham. So Echo Eternal is, is a really beautiful project that's come out of the survivor testimony. It's a commemorative arts, media and civic engagement project, which is delivered through schools, bringing diverse communities together, helping to create a harmony and, and you know amongst other things combating hate crime um, it's a project that started off in Birmingham and it's been delivered in Liverpool and uh, a Dulwich school took part uh, this year as well Liverpool as I said Lipper um, I mean it's a beautiful project which really helps the younger generation to echo eternally the horrors of that period and we're hoping that it's going to travel through all the schools in the country eventually we've got big ambitions for echo eternal Wish it well. Just a profoundly important and good project. Uh, I was also thinking, I remember chatting to your, your dad as well. I mean, your family has been through it. Uh, he's a brilliant economist and was hounded out of South Africa, having seen the horrors of apartheid which he stood against. I mean, not once but twice have such horrific things befallen your family. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? We were just talking about Echo Eternal, but that's a family echo, isn't it? Um, but maybe that's made us all committed to make sure that the world is slightly better when we leave than uh, now we're here. I mean, I think there are so many amazing projects going on. But again, through Who Do You Think You Are, my father's a very, very modest man. Uh, but it was wonderful to be able to discover a bit more about his own personal heroism in South Africa and the sacrifices that he and many of his friends and colleagues made to try and make South Africa a more equal place. Um, it's certainly given me a real sense of determination and responsibility uh, to continue a little bit of his fight, uh, because, yes, he's, he's a, he is a titan himself. A, a damn fine economist as well, but that's a separate issue. Um, you also uh, are very much a family person, and, 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 and we've had the honour of knowing that a little bit, um, uh, but the book that your two children came up with, I just think is absolutely... The only other person I know who's done something similar to it is Ronnie Wood of the Great Rolling Stones, who did readings for people suffering during lockdown. There's the picture of it. For folk at uh, home listening on radio, uh, it's called Letters from Lockdown, Famous Faces, Frontline Workers, Stay-at-Home Heroes. Uh, Natasha, it was not your idea, it was your children's idea, but, my God, you got some people to take part in it. Well, do you know what? So this is a, this is a project in lockdown. We decided. I've always written lots of letters. Hopefully, Alistair, you've written, you've received many of my letters. But I love writing letters, and so it's rubbed off on the children. In lockdown, we wrote to people every single day, starting off with friends and family. You know, how are you? We're lonely. Are you lonely? You know, what are you, what are you doing with your time? And then we just upped the game, and we just wrote to everybody. And like you, Al, I've done lots of favors in my life to lots of different people. So I called in a few favors, and uh, we've had some amazing responses. I'm president of Bernardo's. So um, all the proceeds, the publisher profits of the book go to Bernardo's. And it's a gorgeous collection of lockdown experiences from the likes of Ed Sheeran to Bill Gates, the Prime Minister, um, you know, Keir Starmer, I mean, loads of people. But the children didn't always know who they were writing to when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Paul, Paul McCartney was another. No, no, you don't have to trouble. My children meet top show jump and when they were little ones, they didn't know who they were. They certainly do now. Um, you mentioned Bernardo's. Yeah. You're also a uh, Save the Children ambassador. Um, for both of you, it's kids, 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 isn't it? Always. I mean, it's the biggest pleasure. It wasn't easy having children. I, uh, you know, I struggled like lots yeah. of women to have kids. And so when I eventually got them, and you were a very kind friend supporting me through that struggle, but when I eventually got my children, I mean, my word, they were the most precious thing, like every parent knows. Um, but yes, I mean, I, I'm labelled by them as being very, uh, what do they call me? Um, OP, you know, overprotective. Uh, but <laughs> too bad. I love them so much. But yes, we, 
you, you find us in the countryside today. Um, we live on a farm in Sussex. Um, I keep saying that all the animals that I bring into the farm are really for the children, but the truth is they're really for me. <laughs> That's what I was going to say.